Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 26, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. The quick diary that I wrote today is about an experiment that I ran with ChatGPT. It's a quick defensive experiment. The goal here is for vendors like for example apple that have these very brief vulnerability descriptions apple usually has sort of one sentence for an impact and then a one sentence description but doesn't have anything like cvss scores or any rating of the vulnerability being patched here so i basically asked chat gpt to come up with a cvss score for these apple vulnerabilities and it actually did a pretty good job i posted uh, one of the Samples here. I think it probably rated a little bit too high the network impact that it saw in the description. I didn't really see, but again, it was very limited information, and I think good enough that uh, next time Apple will release some patches, I may give it a spin and have it at CVS scores uh, to these vulnerabilities to see if that helps us a little bit better than what we have now sort of when we are trying to rank these vulnerabilities. The challenge of course always that there is a good number of vulnerabilities being patched. So going through them relatively quickly, rating them is usually really not all that reliable and consistent when I'm doing it. And then we have, well, yet another UDP based uh, denial of service amplification vector. This time it's the service location protocol. If you haven't heard of the service location protocol, you're probably not alone. It's an older service that shouldn't really be used anymore and definitely should not be exposed to the internet. Well, uh, according to BitSight, who found out about this vulnerability and discovered it, there are actually 54,000 SLP speaking devices connected to the public internet. So what's the problem with this particular protocol? Well, first of all, it uses port 427 and by connecting to a vulnerable device, an attacker is able to receive a list of all the services running within that local network that registered themselves with SLP. That in itself isn't great, but what's even worse is that an attacker is able to add additional services to that list. So an attacker is able to expand the list, making the response larger and larger. The actual request is only like about 28 bytes, I think, if I remember correctly from reading, or 29 bytes, I think it was. And uh, then the response may be as big as 64 kilobytes. So giving you an amplification factor of about 2000. Overall, this then looks like any other UDP amplification attack. So whether that's a DNS or other protocols that we have seen used like this, where the attacker is spoofing a request from the victim's IP address, and then all these vulnerable services are responding to this request. From a defensive point of view, of course, the victim, well, uh, can't really do much other than filter the traffic somehow. But the real problem here is that we have all of these reflectors out there, just you know, like we had these problems with DNS reflectors and other protocols like NTP and such. That's what has to be addressed. Make sure you're blocking port 427. That's the port being used for this protocol and the port that really should not be exposed to the internet. And then of course, make sure that you disable this protocol if it's still enabled on some devices. Apparently Minolta is using it on some printers. VMware ESXi does also use it, so that may be something to look for. A number of other uh, systems that are listed in the BitSide advisory. And talking about things that, well, really shouldn't just happen, the Apache Superset, which is software that allows you to sort of visualize and explore uh, data, apparently comes with a pre-configured secret key. They do write an installation guide to change it, but apparently lots of people don't do so. Horizon 3 AI now has a proof of concept exploit how this particular vulnerability, this pre-configured key can actually lead to a remote code execution on affected servers. 
So once you're done checking for any rogue SLP servers, make sure that if you're using Apache Superset, you have it patched. Again, a proof of concept is available now from Horizon 3 AI. And beginning of April, Sophos released an update for its web appliance fixing CVE 2023-1671. Mentioned it back then in part because these web appliances are sort of going end of life later this year. Well, uh, we do have a proof of concept exploit available on GitHub now for this vulnerability. Pretty straightforward to exploit this vulnerability to gain remote code execution. So you definitely must patch this vulnerability now. And again, look into replacing these appliances sometime later this year. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Hope to see some of you at our keynote panel on Wednesday uh, today. I'll also add a link to the show notes uh, to the webpage where it may be live streamed. I'm not sure if it will be sort of a public live stream or uh, just for attendees. Well, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.